Okay, guys. All right, I'm back um, for the story because I told the children that I mean, it's like I said during the COVID when we were like separated, it's really hard to tell a story like we, we normally would do when the kids are together. So seeing the pictures well is really something difficult for the, us to do because it takes forever to read a story. But I do believe that reading is important to support literacy. So this is why I do do a story at least once a week. All right. So the story is actually a play version because we're also studying about dialogues and supporting characters and character development. So this is important for kids to be able to learn so that when they do write their stories about their monster characters, they will understand what dialogue is and what what do they do they need to write in the written dialogue when it's in a play generally there's no quotes because everybody's speaking so therefore in a, in, a, in a play version there's not going to be quotations but if they were to write a story like harry potter or something in the future most of those characters you will see that there are quotation marks because it's mixed with normal text okay but in this story there are no quotation marks because it's already set up as a play. Now, Julia Donaldson wrote this, the original story, and I think the, the script is written by Julia Monks, or sorry, Lydia Monks. I'm not sure if Axel Schleffer actually had a part of this because he's not written on the book, but in the original book, I'm not sure if it's just a Julia Donaldson or if it's a team Axel Schleffer as well. Uh, something you might want to research if you're interested in purchasing this book. So, <clears throat> without further ado, this is the story, the play, What the Lady Bird Heard Next. So today, the children did get a list of all the characters and I had them listen for whenever I would read if they could catch all the characters that were written. So the characters of the story, as you can see there's quite a few, are mainly the barnyard animals and the farmer and two thieves and all the animals together and the narrator. Okay. Animals take up their places in the farmyard herded in by the farmer. Once upon a farm lived a ladybird, and these are the things that she saw and heard. The cow in her shed, the horse in his stall, the cats who purred on the garden wall, the barn full of straw, the field full of sheep. The kennel where the dog lay fast asleep. The fish in the pond, the drake and the duck. The hive of bees and the heap of muck. The hog in his sty, the goose in her pen. And the coop which was home to the fat red hen. X, bees, fuzzy, mrs. Now the fat red hen with her thin brown legs laid lots and lots of speckled eggs. But to them, oh help, oh no, oh dear, those eggs began to disappear. Each morning all the eggs had gone and the animals asked, what's going on? I'll find out, said the lady bird. So she flew and she flew and she saw and she heard. Stage lights dim, enter hefty you and lanky then. My, my mean driving man. 
She saw two men in a big black van with a torch and a sack and a cunning plan. They were hefty hue and lanky then, who had been put to jail but were out again. Said lanky then to hefty hue, let's steal another egg or two. But hefty hue said, listen then, I vote we steal the fat red hen. We'll make our way to the chicken coop and scoop her up in one fell swoop. Just think of the chose eggs, shall those eggs shall lay us, and all the money folk will pay us. Great idea. We'll soon be rich. It makes my fingers stop to itch. You and then I'm driving. Make sure here. Oh, there we go. Okay. The little spotty lady bird told the animals what she heard. Hefty Hugh and Linky Len are planning to steal the fat red hen. Then the cow said moo, and the hen said quack. Hiss, said the goose. Quack, said the duck. Nee, said the horse. Oink, said the hog. Bat, said the sheep. Woof, said the dog. And the two cats meowed. Who's meow, bad, bad men, men? We can't let them steal the fat red hen, meow. But the ladybird said, listen quick. I thought of a really clever trick. Bird whispers in everyone's ear. Stage lights dim. Enter Hefty Hugh and Lanky Len again. At dead of night, the two bad men opened the coop and snatched the hen. Hugh and Len grabbed the hen. The fat red hen began to cluck. <laughs> Why don't you steal the downy duck? Her eggs are bigger far than mine, and people say they taste divine. That's good thinking, ain't it, men? They tiptoed to the pond, but then the downy duck began to quack. Oh, please don't put me in your sack. Why don't you steal the goose instead? She's bigger still and better fed. Her eggs are huge and her tasty too. That's good thinking, ain't it, you? But when they tried to seize the goose, she hissed at them. Oh, not much use. Why don't you steal that great big bird? Super duper snuggly snard. What? Said Len and who? Said Hugh. The goose replied, I thought you knew. She lays the biggest eggs of all. Each one looks like a rugby ball. The duck. Join them. Ah, she's friendly too. I'm sure she'd love to live with you. She'll put on ends to all of your cares. You'll very soon be millionaires. Where's this nerd? Asked Lanky Ren. Not far away. Chipped in the hen. She lives inside that big brown heap. You'll find her there. She's fast asleep. The two thieves laughed. <laughs> we got it made. Let's take turns with the farmer's spade. 
they did away at the compost heap. They dug and they dug and then said, it stinks. Won't half as so do you. Where is that great enormous bird, that super duper snuggly snud? She's rather shy, the goose replied. She must be hiding deep inside, the goose replied. So they dug a tunnel nice and deep. That's far enough. Now I need to creep. Hugh and Lynn crawl into the compost heap. I think we're nearly there now, then the snare will soon be ours. But then the compost heap collapses. The heap collapsed and you said, Yuck! We're covered head to toe in muck. And Lynn complains. There's no snod, they just made up that giant bird. Then the animals gather round and all let a deafening sound. Nay, moo, oink, bah, woof, woof, meow. What a racket, what a row. The farmer woke and said, Goodness me, oh. And he had a word with prize Queen Bee. And the bees chased after the two bed men, bad men, and they never came back to the farm. Then the cow said, moo, and the hen said, click. Hiss, said the goose, and quack, said the duck. Nay, said the horse, and oink, said the hog. Bad, said the sheep, woof, said the dog. And the farmer cheered, hooray, and both cats purred. But the ladybird said never a word, and neither did the snuggling snow. The end. I think that's the end. Yeah. This talks about the story. So that is the lady, the lady, the ladybird play. What the ladybird heard next, and um, our words this week for spelling are based off of the story, um, and they are rhyming words for the most part, except for heard. Heard is H E A R D, and the other ones are disappear and appear, they disappear and dear. Okay. They would have the same E-A-R sound, but heard will not be heard. It won't be heard because it doesn't have the E-D at the end. Okay, so um, I hope you guys had fun listening to the story. Um, I will try to get this copied for you so you can take it home and read it with mom and dad. And I think, I think it would be a lovely play for them to do for like the end of the school year. So we'll talk more about that later, but and we will be working again, like I said, in character development and supporting characters, and they will be writing their own stories the course of the school year, because every time we hit a different element in English, they'll be expected to deliver that in their stories, okay? All right, well, you guys have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, boys and girls. Have a great day.